my name is Una and I'm a researcher at the University of Birmingham looking into hydrogen storage materials. Hydrogen is all around us and it is the potential future energy source. Today we're going to be discovering how to generate hydrogen through electricity and how we store hydrogen in porous materials. So now I'm going to show you around my lab. Welcome to my lab. We can store our hydrogen in these kinds of cylinders. What we do is we compress down the gas to fit it inside here. We can also store it in solid form, like in these metal alloys. We'll get back to this later. Now, let's go and generate some hydrogen. So for the bubble machine, you'll require some bicarbonate of soda, two drawing pins, a nine volt battery, some water, a plastic cup, and either a spatula or a spoon. First, we are going to take one of our plastic cups and insert two drawing pins into the bottom. This can be quite fiddly, so you need to be careful not to stab yourself while doing this. The next step is taking your spatula and spoon and your bicarbonate of soda and add the bicarb about a teaspoonful. The next step will be to add some water to the bubble machine. Now we take our 9 volt battery and place it on the bottom of our cup. It might be a bit difficult to see at first but we are generating some bubbles out of the little metal pins. And that is how you make the bubble machine. This is carbon aerogel. It's a hydrogen store. It soaks up hydrogen like a sponge. Let's find out why using this microscope. So this is a microscope image of a sponge. As you can see, it has lots of holes which can absorb water. And now here's a microscope image of our carbon aerogel. As you can see, it has quite a rough surface and there are some pores visible. This is how it can absorb hydrogen. These two materials are very good at absorbing. So in our next activity, we're going to be looking at how much water we can absorb with a sponge. In your box, you will be getting a square Petri dish, a sponge and a measuring cylinder to measure up to 25 ml of water because in a moment, we're going to be pouring it onto our sponge and seeing how much the sponge will absorb. So we're going to put our sponge on the Petri dish, take our water and pour it over the top of our sponge. The goal of this is to see how much water the sponge can absorb. If any water has poured out onto the sides, you can pour it back into the measuring cylinder and either pour it back onto the sponge or take that into account. Depending on the size of your sponge, it will be able to absorb more or less water. You can measure this based on how much water you have put in your cylinder and how much has been taken up. We can experiment with different size sponges to see how their area affects how much water they absorb. So now I'm going to cut the sponge up into small bits. Now we've cut up our sponges into smaller pieces. Let's see how much water they absorb compared to our previous big sponge. So now we've learned how to generate and store hydrogen. It's up to you what we do with it in the future. Bye.